Devontae Lewis, welcome back to Louisiana Lefty. Thank you for having me. It's so glad to be back. It's so good to see you. And you're now Public Service Commissioner Devontae Lewis. So congratulations. We, yeah. <laughs> we this week, uh, officially on uh, Monday, kicked off 100 days. So we are, um, we are in the second 100 days now of uh being on the commission so it's been a fast 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 moving uh pace but you know uh there's work to be done and we're going to get the work done fantastic well i wanted to talk to you on video before we record the podcast like we tend to do about something that's happening in the news right now and i've seen you comment a lot online about the stuff that's been going on in nashville the Tennessee three, but in particular, the two Justins, uh, Justin Pearson and uh, Justin Jones, is that the second mm -hmm. one, uh, who were expelled from the Tennessee assembly, but are now back. They've still got to face, I guess, a, another election over this, though they're temporarily back. But I just kind of wanted to get your general thoughts on what's happening there. I mean, I think what we saw in Tennessee is what many of us across the South has known to be going on, which is this very much authoritarian rise, this kind of almost fascism that we're seeing the majority party, which happens to be the Republican Party, take in our state legislatures. Um, while people have focused so much on, on President Trump and Kevin McCarthy and Mitch McConnell, our eyes have not been on where a lot of the harm to our communities have been, which is in state government. And we have seen this um, from places where the rules do not apply to them. They can debate as long as they want, but if it's something they don't care about, all of a sudden debate is gone. Bills are moving to committees that make no sense if they want to pass them, but if they want to kill your bill for the mayor, for the people of Louisiana or any other state, they are doing it. And so what I think this moment really showcased with the Justins is what so many of us in Mississippi in Louisiana and Alabama and Texas and North Carolina have seen over and over and over again. But this was the first time I think the Republican Party, the Republican leadership, just felt like everybody was on their side. Mm -hmm. And just assumed that no longer was it about cutting off your microphones as we got to remember, this isn't the first time people's microphones been cut off. Let's go back and look at Wendy Davis's filibuster <laughs> in 2000 and uh, what was that, 15? when they cut her off from, from uh, debating the abortion bill. So this is not a new phenomenon within legislative bodies. I think what we saw in Tennessee was the extent that the Republican Party was willing to go to silence somebody's voice. It wasn't good enough to cut their mic. It wasn't good enough to make them only one member of a committee or kill all of their bills. They wanted to showcase from now on, if you don't do as I say, when I say, I will expel you. And I think what most people may not got in the expulsion conversation is the reason they took to the well is because the speaker wasn't allowing them to speak. He was denying them personal privilege. When they were talking, he cut off their microphones. And so this wasn't just a protest of rebellion for the sake of rebellion. It was that I can't even articulate the concerns of my community as a duly elected member and if you're not going to respect me as a member, why should I respect the quorum? Right. Why should I respect these rules that only pertain to me and don't pertain to everybody else? And so what we've seen is they, they, they really said how far they could go. And I mean, I don't know if how many people have been on Twitter today to see that um, there was a secret recording of the yes, fallout. That's wild. And yeah. If you listen to them, they are not remorseful about whether or not an expulsion should happen they believe they are at war yes with black folks and, and brown folks and and progressive thought and liberal thought and they believe that they are the frontline soldiers to save america and that to me is more damaging and scary than anything in this moment to show that i think we are still caught up in this notion of bipartisanship that oh we just need to find common ground if you listen to those recordings, it has nothing to do with common ground. It has everything to do with we have marching orders and you better never leave this field and they are our enemy and we must destroy them. The recording is wild because they start out like in this sort of hurt tone of like the Democrats are not our friends. 
But then they go on to talk about all the things that they're trying to do. They've gerrymandered themselves into a super majority and they're trying to take all these rights away from people and just sort of trod over folks rights. And, and they, they like list the litany of things that they really need to be doing. And we're, we're off track now and people are calling us racist and misogynistic. And, and this is an outrage, but like you said, it's sound. They kept saying it was at war and they were the front line to defend the Republic, but it sounded a whole lot like they were really talking about the Confederacy. Right. That is what I feel. This is the, the South is trying to rise again. And, and I mean, you go from, from Texas with Wendy Davis, you go last year in, in the Louisiana legislator when Clay Schecksnyder, our speaker, shut off the cameras when the Black Caucus was detesting um, them not following the court order to redraw the maps. You look at Mississippi, where there's a, a, a Black man uh, recommended by the entire State Board of Education, and the State Senate rejects his nomination in Mississippi. You see it in North Carolina, where they were completely just changing the rules every step of the way to ensure um, that Governor Cooper didn't have power. And it's not even in the South. You go up to Wisconsin, where they are basically the day after a Supreme Court justice is elected, Republicans are saying, how can I impeach them? Mm -hmm. and, and so, I mean, I think we in this moment have to recognize that this is about power. Mm -hmm. This isn't about um, policy. This isn't about trying to find common ground, that this is an ideological war that is happening in this country and we have to respond to it uh, mm -hmm. because they are coming, as you see, for our books. They are coming for our education. They are basically saying, if you aren't taught to be a conservative, something is wrong mm -hmm. because it's not about freedom, right? If we talked about freedom, we wouldn't be banning books. If it was about freedom, we wouldn't be banning drag shows that now all of a sudden are, are an issue that have been going on for the last 30, 40 years. We are talking about a moment now where there is a, continue, a, a contiguous part of America that does not like the changing demographics mm -hmm. and does not like that the changing demographics have equal rights. Mm -hmm. When you listen to what happened to the Justins and the way that the Republican membership in their hearing talked about them, said, you need to understand this is how to operate in our house. And they, when they said our house, they didn't mean the state house of Tennessee. They meant the house that they control, right. which means I give you power to speak. I tell you what bills can pass. I tell you what committees you can be on. And, and, and I think that's what we have to recognize in all of these fights in this moment from CRT to book banning, to anti-drag, to transgender rights, um, to diversity, equity, and inclusion. It's about, I don't want you to empower yourself because this is not what I want. This is not what I believe America is. Well, and the protest in Tennessee started over a school, yet another school getting shot up. And if you're talking about freedom, the idea those kids showed up to ask for the freedom to go to school without fear of being shot down in their classroom. And that right. seems to be lost on them that that is itself a freedom that people are asking for. And I think this is a, a changing of a guard. I think I've heard Dr. Reverend William Barber say this, that we're entering the third reconstruction. And I think he is spot on when he talks about this is because as people mentioned, why do you think the Justins or I respond to gun violence very differently than, than someone else is because I have never known a time in my life where I'm not doing a gun drill. Remember, I was, Columbine, I think was 94, if I'm not mistaken, I was two. So my entire childhood has lived under the premise of school shootings. Mm -hmm. And so I think what we're seeing from this moment, from uh, all, all of these issues is, is the younger generation not respecting the decorum because the decorum thus far is harming us. Mm -hmm. The respectability politics in that sense is harming us of, well, we can't really make a big deal. Oh, well, you know what? We don't have the votes, so we're not going to fight. We cannot wait anymore. Our, the climate is changing. Our planet is dying. We, our kids are getting shot up in schools. We 
do not have disposable income to afford homes because of the amount of student loan debt we have to take just to get a job that will pay us a living wage. This generation, the younger millennials and Generation Z are, we are not waiting anymore for you to give us our rights. We're not waiting for you to tell me when I can breathe clean air or when I can enter a building, a school, a movie theater, anywhere and not be shot to death. And I think you're starting to see that tension because I think one of the things we forget is while the protest movement really took off in Tennessee, they were members of the Democratic caucus who were fussing at them on that day, who were upset with the Justins for being at the well, were ridiculing them for not following the quorum. And I'm, I'm glad now that they're standing up for them, but we got to remember there were people on our side who weren't mm -hmm. with them until the Republicans showed how far they would go. And then we got to be better than that. Do you think the Republicans made a strategic error by allowing the Justins to be so elevated now such that? Absolutely. Yeah. I, I think they are, they are so insular into, I think, their thought process to recognize that, okay, a few people would make a ruckus, but I don't think they were prepared for the equation of what it was going to do how it was going to elevate uh, that fight because the Justins and their fight doesn't just represent um, dissenting voices in a, in a minority, the minorities dissenting voices. They represent the struggles of, of, of young black people and black and brown people who feel like this country is not on their side. It represents the younger generation who are saying, we are tired of waiting for you all to give us a solution and telling us to sit back and appreciate the world that we have. Because granted, yes, does America have many great attributes? Absolutely. But we are exhausted. Mm -hmm. I told people, when you think about me, and I'm, on, I'm older than over the Justins, in my lifetime, my 31 years of life, I have lived through, through Columbine, massive school shootings, the weather changing, Hurricane Katrina, uh, Superstorm Sandy, the Iraq War, the Afghanistan War, the Great Recession, the collapse of the mortgage crisis, COVID-19, Black Lives Matter, uh, uh, police brutality, uh, student loans bubbling up, the housing market crashing. Think about that. All of that in 31 years. Mm -hmm. So we don't know what the American dream really is because we've been living a nightmare since we've been born. And we are clawing out of it. And I think we are in a place of saying, we're not going to wait for it to get better. We're going to make it better now. And there's, and I think they are awakening. And we're looking at the statistics. Younger voters are finally starting to turn out. And I mm -hmm. think what's making everyone scared is older millennials are not turning more conservative. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we've had this tradition where you're, where you're more liberal when you're 18 or 30, then when you get into that 35 to 50, there's you start some of you you start making that little that little curve to the right. And what we're seeing is that curve isn't coming. The people now in that 35 to 45 are staying pretty much liberal. And now you have a, a generation that is irate and are turning out in droves. And while the Republicans may have protected themselves with gerrymandering, they will not be able to protect themselves for eternity. Right. And I think younger voters are starting to show up and show out. We saw this in the midterms. We saw this in Chicago. We saw this in my election. We saw this in Wisconsin, where that drip, drip, drip between those, those 25 and 18-year-olds isn't dripping at the same extent as everybody else. Well, I'm here for the young people turning out the vote and taking things over. And I'm especially excited that young people are showing up to run for office and like yourself and the Justins and Maxwell for Austin, Florida, getting elected, because I think uh, that's what we really need to make some changes in the country right now. Absolutely. And I think that's what the scary part is. We are no longer just the outside agitators. We're the ones with power. And I think that's why, the Justins agitated the, the leadership so much because they they can't brush them off like they want to because they represent the same amount of people that they do. Mm -hmm. They are 
elected the same way. And I think it is this, how do you ridicule and say you don't understand when they have the full rights as everybody else, they get now the rules and all of this. And so I think it's changing the conversation. It's changing the, 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 the opportunity. And that's what I want to see in the rest of the deep South is we need some Justins in our state legislature here in Louisiana. Uh, we need some people under 30 who are going to say, we're not going along with this old system that has been not working for our people for 40 years. And we need people like Justin's to not only challenge our opposition, but to challenge our friends. And I think that's the most important lesson that I take from the Justin's is not only did they challenge the people that we want to say is our op opposition, they challenged our friends to say, are you going to do better? Are you going to fight for us? Are you going to realize that this get along to go to get along system doesn't work for us and we need to push back even harder than we have ever before. And so that's what I'm hoping is the takeaway is that young people across this nation not only vote more, run for office more, but then challenge the current leadership more. Well said. All right, Devante, sit tight. We'll get right to recording the podcast.